Hey Data Factory fans, this is Dana Perlowski here, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to hotfix your ADF production environment. Now, before we dive into what a hotfix is and how to do that, I want to quickly review the recommended CI/CD process for Azure Data Factory. Now, I'm assuming you have three different environments, develop, UAT or test, in production, but your organization may have four, may have five, really you could have any different number, but the patterns are still gonna be very similar. Now, your development factory will have Git associated either via GitHub or Azure DevOps Git, and all of your development generally is gonna be happen via feature branches that you fork from the master slash collaboration branch, create a feature, do a pull request to merge that back into collaboration, publish that to your development factory, and then use that published ARM template to deploy to your task factory, to your production factory using Azure DevOps or some other release manager. So what is a hotfix? Saying you follow the existing CICD process and you deploy to prod, but what if you find a bug that you realize really needs to be fixed right away? It's something happened that breaks your mission critical data processes. Now, you can't deploy the current collaboration branch because it may have new untested features, different things may have been introduced since your last production deployment, and all you really want to do is do a small fix to fix what's actually broken in production. Now, you have two options here. The first is if you know what the issue is and the solution is quick, hot fix. This is also known as Quick Fix Engineering, or QFE, and what I'm going to cover for the rest of today's video. If the issue is not known or the solution takes time, we recommend you just revert to your old production version, which is pretty easy using Azure DevOps release pipelines. The hotfix process in Data Factory is as follows. The first thing you're going to do is open a Git client and fork a hotfix branch from the commit version of what's in production. Then once you create this branch that's a copy of what got published, you're gonna to switch to that branch in the Data Factor UX and fix the bug. From there, you're gonna use the UX exporting of ARM template feature, download the ARM template, and then merge that ARM template back into your ADF publish or wherever you've configured your publish branch, circumventing the normal CI/CD process that you would do to do a pull request of a feature branch into collaboration. Once you've merged this new ARM template into ADF Publish, in Azure DevOps or whatever release manager you have, you want to create a new release and then deploy the fixed release to the affected environments. Once you've finished hotfixing your production environment, you then want to apply the changes you did in your hotfix to your development branches so future releases don't run into the same issue. Your first indication that you may need to do hotfix often comes from the monitoring experience of Data Factory. Whether you get an automated notification or you're manually monitoring, you will likely see that runs that were succeeding are broken or runs new runs that should be succeeding are also broken. So here on my monitoring page, I'm going to investigate my hotfix pipeline. I could see I have one web activity that fails. And my error was the response code was invalid. So looking at my input parameters, I could see, oh, I had the URL adfrules.com. That is not a valid URL. So I quickly know I want to change this to something valid to get my pipeline run to succeed. These are the type of quick changes that you would do to really enable a hotfix. If it's anything more complex than that, likely you'll just want to revert your deployment. Now that I know I have a quick change that I need to make to break what's broken in my production environment, I'm going to head on over to my release pipeline in DevOps. Looking at my release pipeline, I could see my version deployed on May 28th at 447 is the most recent version of UAT and prod. This is the deployment that failed because if your alerting and monitoring is set up correctly, your previous deployments would not have 
indicated that you have this error that needs to be hotfixed. Diving into the deployment, we could see the artifact of the dev factory that generated this change. Let's click on this commit. And here we see, oh, ADF rules was part of this. So we very quickly know that here's where the change was introduced. And we could actually also, from the commit name, get the commit ID of the collaboration branch. So because it's a little big, I'm going to just paste this into my URL. Whoops, let's copy that here. And here we could see that this commit ID is the commit of the master branch that we're gonna to need to fork to make our hotfix change. Using the Git client of your choice, you're gonna to want to take that commit ID that you acquired in DevOps and fork a new branch from that commit. Here I'm gonna be using a PowerShell on a local Git repository that I cloned from that master repository. So to create a new branch from that commit, I'm gonna do git checkout dash b. So checkout is to go to a new branch, dash b is to dynamically create one. I'm gonna call that branch hotfix. And then I'm going to create a new branch from the specific commit ID I created earlier. So now I've created a new branch hotfix that is a copy of that git state. So using the git push origin hotfix command, I'm going to then create that hotfix branch in that master git environment. From here, we're going to go to the data factory UX and then do our changes on this branch. In the data factory UX, if you open up the git branch tab, you'll now see the new hotfix branch you just created there. Let's click on that and open it. And this will open the data factory in that state. So you wanna quickly make the change that you are going to make. So let's go into our hotfix pipeline, call an endpoint, and let's make this endpoint valid. So let's say we just do something like microsoft.com. And let's just quickly debug it to make sure that this pipeline's running correctly. You know, you don't wanna do your testing before you actually publish it to production. And here we can see that now our pipeline is succeeding. We were able to successfully call an endpoint and that's what our pipeline was meant to do. We could uh, save this pipeline. And then what we're gonna do now is instead of publishing or merging this back into master, we want to manually export the template because we're circumventing the normal CICD process. So let's click on export ARM template. When you export an ARM template, a zip file is downloaded onto your local machine containing the ARM template, the ARM template parameters file, along with the link template and factories file. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is rename the ARM template and the ARM template parameters file to ARM template for factory.json and ARM template parameters for factory.json to correspond with the file names in your ADF publish branch. Once you change the name of the ARM template files, you're gonna to want to upload those new files to your ADF publish branch. Now, what I did, and again, there's many ways to do this, is because I get set up on my local machine, I just switched to the ADF publish branch within my local Git, copy those files over, and then I'm gonna do a Git push to upload those files to the ADF publish branch. So here we could see that the files I have changed are just simply the ARM template, ARM template parameters file, and a couple of things in link templates in case you're using that as well. Now I'm going to go add this, create a new commit called hotfix, and then I'm gonna push th these new files to my ADF publish branch. Once you've updated that ADF publish branch with the ARM template from your hotfix branch, you can go into Azure DevOps and see that the appropriate files have been changed. Once your ADF publish branch has been changed, you can go into your releases and create a new release from that branch. 
Now, I automatically create releases every single time my ADF publish branch is created. So I'll be able to just deploy from here. But if you don't have this triggering set up, you could always manually create a release from that publish branch here. So diving into my pipeline, let's deploy to both UAT and prod. Now it looks like UAT has succeeded. So let's dive into that factory and let's see the updated resources. Here we see our hotfix pipeline. And we could see now it has the correct URL, which we could verify via debugging. So now UAT is done and prod's about to finish up and this should have a very similar result. So this process I just demonstrated is how to hotfix your production and UAT environments if you do run into very quick fixable issues. Something I do wanna mention, it, it is a lot easier to just go to your releases and quickly click on a previous release and deploy to an older version. You could utilize Azure DevOps to maintain that versioning history. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments.